Hey guys, how are you? I know that many of you prefer when I do the voiceover and show my face, but I didn't want to distract from what looks like a really aesthetically pleasing shot of just like my watercolors and my journal. If this is your first time with me, hello, welcome. I am Anna and uh, I do a little thing called From Anna, which is all the things. <laughs> Today we are watercoloring um, a bit of Barbie while I chat about my thoughts um, in relation to Barbie, my relationship to Barbie, um, what's going on, what she's been through a little bit, <laughs> what has sat on her tiny shoulders. Um, I've got a couple of different thoughts that I wanted to share with you, uh, as you can tell. Um, okay, so I grew up in the 80s, right? I am a child of the 80s and 90s, and I had all the Barbies. Um, I had a lot. I think at one point I had like around 50. I, I want to say, you know, a rough estimate. Um, I got them for birthdays. I, I had special ones that were like tucked away in a box like that we, you know, that we were not allowed to open. And then, of course, we had the everyday play ones and um, they were special to me. I played with them a lot. Uh, I am older than my sister by almost five years so and I've always been um, able to self-soothe I've always been happy to be alone I've always been happy to be in my room in a dark corner uh, so Barbie was a lot of my childhood play um, I had a lot of clothes for her um, I remember that it was a lot more of like dressing her and getting her hair done and that sort of thing than it was like holding two dolls together and like making them do things. I also remember exploring um, my body through Barbie. I remember, uh, you know, recognizing, oh, you know, I'm going to have breasts. <laughs> Um, I remember um, exploring, um, you know, Ken and Barbie uh, sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, putting them, you know, in positions where my mother was not really happy to find them. <clears throat> and then, of course, you know, leading to bigger topics such as the birds and the bees. Um, I had Barbie, I had later on, I had Skipper and Chelsea and the dogs and the things. Uh, I didn't have all of the like playhouses and all that kind of stuff. Like I definitely had, you know, FOMO, the cars and the other stuff, but I had plenty to play with and plenty to keep me um, entertained uh, and keep my sister who came later on, you know, make me furious when she would mess up stuff or um, I had to end I had a you know the, this is where I first figured out I had OCD like I wanted the clothes laid out in a certain way a little ASMR for you because this is real time and since it was so quiet while I filmed it I figured why not <laughs> um, so I grew up, a lot of my dolls were given away or thrown away, stolen eventually. Some, a lot of the clothes were stolen when we moved to South America and then given away um, when we had to like de-stash before moving back to the States. By the time we moved back to the States, I was also um, on the verge of turning 15. And so my interest had definitely changed by then. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Barbie, you know, took a back seat, but <clears throat> later in life when I became a mom, uh, the media had turned on Barbie in a really like, 
you know, ugly way. And they made me, they, they made, not in a, not in a, like, uh, they made me do it. You know, I'm just gonna, the GPS told me to stand in front of train tracks and I'm gonna get run over. No, I, I, I didn't question it. It sounded like logical sense at the time. And I was vulnerable to the propaganda. And so um, I did end up believing for a time um, that, you know, this doll, this piece of plastic had somehow hurt my self-conscious baby self and had uh, made me believe that I was, that my self-worth and my issues of self-image or confidence or lack thereof or I don't know all the things <laughs> everything I'm everything that's wrong with my adult life is because Barbie Barbie Barbie's Barbie <laughs> and so I kept my kids away from Barbie by not participating in buying Barbie products um, they played with plenty of other stuff trust me these children were not lacking for toys Barbie was not part of like something I wanted to bar buy them um, or watch movies about uh, we prefer Disney or Marvel or whatever anyways um, so my kids are 10 and 12 <clears throat> and uh, now you know with all the hoopla surrounding Barbie the movie so many people are so excited about it, but I'm seeing that my kids are not excited about it. And I'm thinking, hmm, why is this? <laughs> and they're like, mom, we're not into it because it's just not, you know, we don't identify with Barbie because we never really played with her. And, you know, um, you know, like, why do you love her so much? You, you never talk about her. You don't have any of them like sitting around. You know, if I if you've ever watched any of my studio tours, I have plenty of toys in my you know surrounding me. But Barbie is not amongst them, and I'm just like, you know what? That's absolutely true. You have no emotional attachment to this doll because you don't know her. Because uh, you know, I've kept you away from her, and so I've watched the uh, Hulu. I don't mean to send. I mean, if you're here. It's, you know, you don't have to listen to this. You could just be here watching the, the actual doodle. But if you're here, I'm pretty sure you know that we were going to be talking about Barbie. But um, <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. Hold on. Well, anyways, so I watched on Hulu the Tiny Shoulders, right? The documentary about, you know, what the Barbie company has gone through with this whole like it's Barbie's fault in the media and and I it sat with me and I was just like okay so maybe it, it you know we're asking too much of a doll honestly and then I also realized I don't have any hard feelings towards you that was some time ago flat uh, fast forward to now where you know all the stuff for the movie is happening and I'm trying to avoid it as much as I can because I did want to see the movie I knew I would see it you know soon after its release and um, but I wasn't as <laughs> I wasn't fangirling about it you know what I mean I just I was curious I was very very curious uh, but I sit down and I watch um, Billie Eilish, who I'm a big, big you know, fan of hers, have been now for like two years of her music, and the kids and I have her LPs, like we, we jam to her, so she's totally our cup of tea. So, you know, I sit down and I watch a couple of YouTube uh, interviews of her talking about her experience with making the song for the movie, and again trying as hard as I can not to watch any previews about the movie because I don't want to know what it's about <clears throat> I do this with all movies it's not just this one um, if I really want to, if I'm really excited about a movie then I'll avoid the previews and stuff so I can so I don't get too much you know information um, 
so yeah so her take on it was you know um all of her little dresses and how she's putting all those memories away and her talking about her own music video took me right back to me playing with the dresses and me putting them away and me organizing that and I can see myself in the different rooms we moved a lot when I was a kid um, all of the different rooms where I sat with my stuff the dolls being the same smiley faces and so much of my inspiration motivation affirmations now um, you know are about like finding a silver lining about trying to have the best day ever, waking up with that mindset, and, um, you know, I don't know, there's just a lot, where, you know, I recently read, um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, I know it's been out for a long time, and I had been delaying reading it, but all books, I believe that, that books come to you when you most need them, so, Uh, It was a great reminder that, um, you know, living outside the lines, living your own creative life, whatever that looks like for you, it doesn't mean that you have to be artistic. It doesn't mean that you have to keep a journal and, you know, draw in the journal or do what I'm doing right here. Although if you're here, I'm guessing you have some kind of creative um, itch. What it does mean, however, is that you get to make the rules of your life and this whole like nonsense about keeping balance about you know your creativity and your how much time you spend with your family and how much time you spend on your phone and how much you spend working it's not a balance it's a harmony you know it doesn't have to meet halfway it doesn't have to just you know some days it's going to look different than others take chances go on the adventure say yes more often than say no but also say no plenty you know there's there's no rule book I feel like everybody's always trying to make a rule book or write a manual there's just no manual um so yeah I I don't know at some point people got really really serious like nine to five just really took over one's life but I think most of us after COVID have realized, you know, there is plenty of time to carve out, to do what we love, to do what brings us joy, to just sit and literally smell the roses. Um, Yeah. I mean, how does one go through a pandemic, a global pandemic, and not come out, you know, realizing that life is a lot more enjoying the little things anyways I don't know where I it's, I don't know what happened here where did this voiceover go <clears throat> what was the point of this we're gonna go back Barbie Barbie came out we went to see it my kids got all excited cause you know it's uh, something to do um but I got excited because I did, I did, I did have that uh, moment where I got in touch with little Anna, and we had a conversation about the good times, and I had a conversation with Logic, and told them I remember being called fat, and that was in Barbie, and I remember being called, you know. Like, your hair was crazy, and that wasn't Barbie. And I remember, um, you know, being made feel less than, and that wasn't Barbie. Um, I remember a lot of the bad things, and none of those were caused by Barbie. They were caused by people close, near and dear, you know, people that should have known better. Uh, People that are no longer in my life because I choose to live out of joy and creativity and happiness and to give my energy to things that spark that. And so I 
rummaged through my children's stuff and I pulled out one of their pinkest <laughs> um, what do you call those skirts it, uh, one of those like uh, you know tulle skirts and uh, it was a very cheerleader moment for me and um, I paired it with a black t-shirt <laughs> and I said, this is my outfit for the day. You know, we're going to see the movie at night, but I'm going to, I'm a Barbie girl. And I did my hair in a really big way, which I don't really normally do. Um, and I felt cute. No makeup, just, I just felt cute. And as I was getting into the car, my daughter snapped the picture. And then she goes, mommy, pose. You know, and we had a couple of different pictures. The last one, I looked like Ace Ventura. If you know the scene, leave a dolphin in the comments <laughs> if you made it this far. Um, my kids love Ace Ventura. Uh, anyways, so yeah, so I knew that moment was captured and then, and then I was just like, you know what, this is going to be my journal moment for the day. I'm going to not just draw it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write about it. <clears throat> I have yet to write about it because instead I have been telling this story now. I've told this story like maybe one, maybe two or three times. Um, and in saying it, I was like, you know what? This is an opinion that maybe I want to share because maybe it will, I don't know, make somebody else feel something. You know, whether you've had... A, good times with Barbie or you've had bad times with Barbie um, I'm not here to judge or maybe Barbie brings back bad memories you know uh, and in which case I'm sorry <laughs> we were at uh, the dog's house so we're hearing my kids and the dogs If it gets too much, I will cut it out. But um, in any case, yeah, that's, uh, that's what inspired all of this. It's a lot. Um, and I have to say, uh, you know, it gave me something to think about. It gave me something to talk about. It got me out of the uh, everyday, you know, that's been going on. Uh, <clears throat> but it's it's all in good fun, you know, and it's all opinion. You don't have to agree with me, obviously. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your stories. Did you have a favorite Barbie? Did you just have one? Um, I did finally open up those Barbies in a box. It was quite. Uh, it was it was it gave me great satisfaction to open it. But then later on when I realized, you know, I could have sold that for money. <laughs> that part kind of like sucked. Um, my kids do have a couple of Barbies left over from like my childhood, not any that they really have gotten for themselves. Plus Barbie has definitely changed um, like the material and the their faces, um, you know, the quality I think has changed a lot. I don't know if for the better or for the worse. I don't really know. I haven't bought a Barbie in a long time. I don't think I've ever bought a Barbie, actually, because they were all gifted to me. <laughs> um, I will address the elephant in the room. I'm really sorry. I didn't double check. Uh, the recording, like the camera, and I realized that I, you know, I left out my legs and my shoes. Um, and if they weren't so cute, I'd apologize for their laughter, but oh, who knows what they're laughing about. Uh, it's real life. It's every day. Um, look at me taking some steps. Let me talk about like what I used uh, during this process. So, um, of course, you see me using my watercolor. 
I did the, uh, oh my God, a perfect drop of sap just dropped on my finger. That was amazing. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take a picture of it as we speak. <laughs> we, uh, we use the rainbow pencil that I usually use uh, to set down the doodle and then um, I'm still using my uh, carbon ink platinum pen because despite me getting the other two preppy pens, this, um, all three of them have a different tip, uh, a different width. And this one falls right in the middle of the two preppies. And the two preppies are like, you know, there's no one between. So anyways, we have yet to solve that dilemma for me. Um, which is fine. It just gives me more options for, um, you know, lettering, thickness, and all that kind of uh, le letter variation. Each one does a different thing. So I'm enjoying that. Plus, it's my favorite ink, so it's not like it's going to go to waste or anything. Uh, I use a little bit of the um, Tombow Furunosuke, I believe, uh, again, for line variation. And then... Um, most of it has just been watercolor, uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm really, really thinking that I need to take like just the colors that I love and use the most, which if you've been here for any length of time, you absolutely know that I have colors that I literally touch every single time and then colors that I've never touched ever. Um, yeah, I'd like to condense my palette a little bit just for for weight, you know, like so I can carry it with me. Um, and just, you know, to not overwhelm myself with choices. Like, it's just silly. I'm just carrying them for no reason, really. <clears throat> um, like, I'm so happy with the way I've condensed my, my pencil case that I'd like to do the same for her the watercolor all right guys we're all done thanks for joining me and i'll talk to you guys real soon bye